Lord, open our lips. And we shall praise your name. Send out your light and truth to be my guide. Let them lead me to your holy hill, to your dwelling place. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and rejoice in the rock, our Saviour. Let us come and give thanks in his presence, and greet him with songs of praise. The Lord is a great God, a King supreme over all. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the mountain heights are his. The sea is his, he made it, and the dry land was formed by his hands. Come, let us kneel and adore. Let us worship the Lord our Maker. He is our God, and we are his people, the flock he leads with his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So as we said, today we're going to be, um, well, over this week, we're going to be thinking about our faith and how it relates to the authorities in the world around us. And um, today we're looking at a reading from Matthew chapter mm-hmm. 5 and thinking about some of the questions around protest. Um, we were going to do this one later in the week, but then seeing what happened yesterday um, at the Old Trafford Stadium, we thought we'd skip this forward a couple of sessions yeah. and we'd do it today instead. Mm. So the reading will be from Matthew chapter 5. So yeah, as Jez said, Matthew 5, verses 38 to 48. You have heard it said that it was said... Sorry. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Do not resist an evildoer, but if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your coat, give your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go also the second mile. Give to everyone who begs from you, and do not refuse anyone who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Brilliant. So, thoughts? Well, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth is challenging, isn't it? A tooth for a tooth, it is indeed. Yeah, um, but I think maybe this goes back to some of what we said yesterday about um, kind of God's perfection uh, Mm. and not being dependent on anything we do but also be encouraged to be an encouraged as Christian people to live in a Christ-like way, mm. which means striving for that perfection and not necessarily living how the world would live. Mm. So not having relationships with other people based on how the world does relationships, but doing it how Jesus shows us to do it, which is to love everyone and to serve everyone, mm. and not just those people that we like. Uh, I suppose the Christian gospel uh, of love isn't a pick and choosing kind of love but it's a love that's universal for everybody yeah absolutely mm. and um in the context of what we're thinking about today of course i think this feels like a a really strange reading to choose probably mm. in that it kind of seems to almost say actually don't protest against things if thing if people do things to you that aren't right or aren't good actually just carry on with that put up with it kind of love them and, and don't mm. don't ask too many questions kind of thing um, but actually, uh, I remember at college, one of, one of our lecturers really, really liked this reading for the reason that he said, actually, it does talk about how to kind of protest, how to kind of stand up for yourself, how to kind of call out those people that are doing mm-hmm. things wrong. But it makes, it makes a statement of doing it in a Christ-like way, as you mm-hmm. say, and doing it from that perspective of love. So, <laughs> so rather than talking about doing kind of a, 
a violent protest, which you could kind of imagine with the, with the kind of eye for an eye, mm. a tooth for a tooth, almost doing one that's kind of more more passive in some ways, but actually in some ways shows more of a kind of standing up for it than, than it would simply fight back and lowering yourself mm. to the level of mm. the, uh, the other person. Yeah, absolutely. And I know you mentioned last night the... Um, the protest at, at Old Trafford, if we can even call it a protest, it just mm. sounded more like a riot, actually. This is true. Um, and to be honest with you, you know, I've woken up and I'm none the wiser, actually, over what they were even protesting for. Mm. Um, that's all I know is I've seen articles about uh, essentially the poor behaviour that went on and the police officer that had his, sl his face slashed and all these different things by the mm. people um, apparently protesting. So, so I suppose in terms of how we protest and how we stand up for things we believe in and how we take a stand for, for those things um, that we need to strive for justice for, I suppose how you do it matters mm. because actually what will that protest be remembered for? Mm. So what will people know you're protesting for? Because yesterday, no idea as a non-football fan what it was even all about. Mm. That's all I know is their behaviour was... was very poor hmm. I, I i know that at least part of it is that manchester united fans don't like the owners but i don't really know much more than that right but, but, but that's it isn't it mm. what you'll now remember of that protest is actually the poor behavior that went on mm. rather than the cause they were actually fighting for and i think that actually manchester united is, is a very basic understanding of it a really good example in that we had the really bad demonstration of what protest looks like last night but a few years ago there was the new football team founded, I think FC United of Manchester, um, that, that that basically mm. felt the same, that didn't like the way the club was going. But rather than be violent and have protests, they set up this alternative club that could mm. do things the way that they felt was actually the right way to do it. And so having those two demonstrations of what standing up for what you believe to be right, mm. um, actually I think is a really good example. It only occurred to me as you were talking mm. then. Mm. Um, but but this reading is, is fascinating in the way that the way that it puts that across of saying actually this this is how you kind of stand up and how you do the right thing. And I remember Gary talking about how each of these kind of almost brings shame, if you like, on on the the other person that, that's doing the thing. So, so and in, in the one where it's talking about striking you on the right cheek, um, obviously if you're facing someone, don't do this with a if there's anyone sat around you. But if you slap on the right cheek, you do it <laughs> as that as a kind yeah. of a way of set of way of almost equals. But if you do it on the other cheek, it becomes the backhand, right. which is um, Gar Gary's demonstration was that. And that's that's the other person trying to show that they are more powerful than you in doing doing it in the other way and saying right. actually that's not the point that's being made. And in the same way with forcing people to go a mile, uh, to walk a mile, the Roman soldiers at the time were allowed to commandeer anyone by the side of the road to carry their pack for a mile but in saying that actually you're going to take it for a second mile they weren't allowed to do that and that would get them in trouble so it's turning all of these different mm. things on their head mm. and saying yes you can do that that's fine but i'm gonna i'm gonna turn it around and show you that actually that isn't a good way to be yeah and there are examples for all of these different ones that are in this of how in doing the other side of it that jesus recommends here it turns it back on the, the person doing it in the first place mm. and saying, look, mm. this is you not doing the right thing, not me. And it's quite an interesting way of looking at it, I think. Yeah, I like. I haven't heard that before. Did you not hear Gary's no, many, I many lectures? No, I don't think I was in that lecture because ah. I've, I've honestly not heard that before. That's uh, really yeah, interesting, sorry. actually. I, I forget exactly which lecture yeah. he said because it felt like a lot of the time. <laughs> That's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, you know, and in the same way, we then got the second half of this reading. I think, again, this relates back to what I was saying at the start um, about how we do things in a Christ-like way, in a way that makes us look a bit strange because we're set apart, really. Mm. Um, so you've got this narrative of, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And then also, if you only greet brothers and sisters, um, what more are you doing than others, actually? Because the Gentiles already do that. Mm. So again, there's that just going one further, isn't it? Going one better. Um, if you like. I don't really like Lamb to go on one better because mm. it's a bit boastful and braggy. <laughs> um, but I think you know what I mean. There's just this kind of... Th the whole second part of this feels like we're set apart to live differently. Mm. And it's lived differently in a way that um, I suppose sets an example to others as to how they should live also. 
um, but makes us look a bit weird and a little bit strange because mm. we're doing what's unexpected. Absolutely. Mm. And that unexpected nature is, is something that's so... Well, we, we've talked about it a lot, I think, over mm. the last few weeks, haven't we, of, of how Jesus came and, and did almost everything the wrong way yeah. from what people thought he was going to be doing. Challenged those who were the religious leaders more than those who were considered outcasts. Ended up dying on a cross instead of conquering the Romans. Mm. Uh, arrived on a donkey instead of on a powerful war horse. And all of those different things. And and it kind of, it sounds really dramatic when you talk about them in that. But actually in this it shows us that some of those things are so yeah. simple as well. And it's simply about how you, it comes back to how you treat others. And, and that can be sometimes the greatest form uh, of protest of actually showing what the alternative mm. is, showing mm. that there is this better way where people are loved and people are equal and people are welcomed and saying, actually, this is the radical message that we have as Christians. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and verse 45 always stands out for me um, as a challenge, actually, to us all just to remember uh, and to just be humbled again by God um, that we are children of our Father in heaven, but to remember that just as we are, so too are the people that we might condemn and exclude um, mm. and not want anything to do with. Um, you know, that ultimate challenge, actually, that sometimes God's grace and love can seem unfair to us because as Christian people, we're, a lot of us are doing our best to try and live good lives, as many people who aren't Christians are. Mm. Um, and God loves all of us, but God also loves those people who live, you know, really challenging, terrible, difficult, painful lives for them and the people around them. And in the same way, um, you know, that the sun rises on them, too. Mm. Uh, and God loves them, too, and offers them the same grace and forgiveness that that he offers us. Mm. And that's always a humbling challenge for us to be reminded of, I think. Absolutely. And recognising that that challenge goes on to verse 48, doesn't it? Mm. And saying, be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. And Judith making the point in the comments that <laughs> we're never going to get yeah. there, no matter how hard we try. But recognising that that is, is the end goal, really. That actually, as, as we walk through the world, as we live together, mm. as, as we seek to try and change things and make things better and, and be people who speak truth and, and live in a way that shows the kingdom of God, actually, the only way that we're ever going to be able to do that is through the, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and trusting in God's power and strength rather than our own. So we're never going to be perfect, but God gives us the chance to at least know something of, of how to get there yeah. through that blessing of the mm. Spirit. And it's only in that that we can love our enemies, that we can turn the other cheek, that we can do all of these things that will hopefully, as I say, bring in even a small part of the kingdom on earth. Mm. Mm. Shall we pray? We can. Feels like a good time to pray. Um, so I've got a new prayer list in front of me. Uh, we have a few names on there that we know we needed to already have on there. Um, but if there's names you would like to add, please do so. Pop them in the comments. Uh, we'll check they're on there or we'll add them if they're not. Brilliant. So let's pray together. God of love and grace, we thank you that once more we can gather together and bring before you the concerns and worries of our hearts and minds. Lord, in this week, as we think about challenges and difficulties, about how we respond and react to the authorities around us, help us, Lord, to see the way in which Christ would react. Help us to follow that perfect example of love, grace and also of truth. Help us to be people that bring in your kingdom. To be people that show your compassion and care. To be people who stand up for what is right. But do so in a way that brings hope to others. Lord, we know around the world there are so many situations of injustice and pain, oppression and conflict, hatred and selfishness. 
and we know that you call your church to speak out on these issues. Help us to do so in a Christ-like way. Forgive us for the times when we have kept silent and open our eyes to the places in which we need to speak and to act. Lord, we continue to pray as well for your world as it struggles with the pandemic and the after effects. For all those places which are still struggling and seeing deaths in the thousands. Once more, Lord, we lift before you the country and people of India. And as we hear in the news that even the terrible statistics that we hear may be underestimates, we lift that nation up to you and pray for your healing and your strength. Lord, for those places too where we seem to be trying to move beyond the pandemic, we pray for wisdom and guidance. We pray for compassion and selflessness. We pray for strength and peace. Peaceful God, God of justice. We pray for anybody who was unsettled or injured in the protests in Manchester last night. God, we pray for people today who might be disappointed or ashamed by the way they behaved last night. We pray for the different leaders and decision makers at Old Trafford and in football generally, as they continue to discern how to move forward in a way that is peaceful and fair for all. And God, as our own communities look towards local elections this week, we pray for your spirit of wisdom to dwell among us as we make decisions about how to vote. As we assess our priorities and what's most important, we pray, Lord, that you will stir us to think of others as well as just ourselves. that even in our voting, in our political thinking, we may be driven by justice for all, fairness for all. And we pray God that throughout this, this political sphere and as, it, as, as it's heightened this week, that the representatives of our different communities will behave in a way that is respectful that is peaceful for all. And Lord, we lift before you those who are most vulnerable in our society and around the world. And that as we think of how we may vote, we would be thinking as much of them, if not more so of them, as ourselves. Lord, we know that in your kingdom, all are allowed to thrive. That you created a world where there is enough for everyone. That you love each person and made us all in your image. And Lord, we long for this to be the case on earth. We long to see this truth and this promise come to fruition. And so, Lord, be at work. 
show us where you call us to be your hands and feet and voices. Open our eyes to see your spirit prompting the world to new life. And help us to overcome as individuals, as communities and as nations our selfishness and greed. Lord, bring healing. And so, God, at the start of this new week, of this new journey with you, we lift up in prayer those people who are on our hearts and minds this morning, praying that they may experience something of your peace, your healing, and your love this week. Loving God, we pray for Babs, for Becky, for Phil and his family, for Kath, Charlotte and Thomas, for Jacob, for Eric, for Mary, for Kevin. We pray for Jackie, for Betty, for Anne, for Janet, for Diane, for Mavis, for Alan, Mari, Louise and Emily, Shirley, Christopher, Jacob, for Olive and for Marty. And Lord, we just pray for your strength and for your presence with us this week in whatever we're facing in the joys and the challenges. May we know that you go with us. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. The Lord has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through the holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us, to show mercy to our forebears and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous before him all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from heaven shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Lord our God, as with all creation, we offer you the life of this new day. Give us grace to love and serve you, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 